Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Over the past few months, I've received some requests to do more videos on Luminar Neo. You may remember that I used to do quite a few. As a matter of fact, I probably did one video a week on Luminar Neo. For some reason, I got away from doing that. So, what I've decided to do is to do a series of videos where I demonstrate my workflow for a specific type of image. In today's video, I'm going to show you my Luminar Neo workflow for a wildlife image. In future videos, I'll show you my workflow for a landscape image, for a macro image, and so on. Now, one thing about my workflow, it is, as the name implies, my workflow. I'm not saying that it's the only way to do it, and if you do it differently, you're wrong. I'm just saying it's a workflow that works well for me. My goal here is to give you ideas so that you could hopefully develop a workflow of your own that works for you. All right, we're going to work on this image. This is an unedited RAW file. It's from Nikon D500. So I'm going to go over to the edit panel. Now, the first thing I like to do, if needed, is reduce noise. If I zoom in, maybe I'll zoom in even more. I'll go down to this drop down here and go to 200%. You can see that there is some noise here. This was shot at ISO 800, and that's relatively common with wildlife images. Often we have to use a higher ISO. Now, I want to remove noise right away because often if you start to edit an image and you're, you know, adding contrast and texture and things like that, uh, it makes it more difficult to get that noise removed. So I'm immediately going to jump over to Noiseless Raw. It's recommending that I use the low adjustment. So I'm going to click on low and it's going to do its thing. One quick note while it's doing this, if you are looking for um, keyboard shortcuts for Luminar Neo, I have a PDF that you could download for free from my website. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. And actually that looks pretty good. It removed the noise fine. So that's as good as that. So we're done removing noise. Now the next thing I like to do, if needed, is to crop and or straighten the image. Now the image is straight, but it definitely needs to be cropped. So I'm going to go over to the crop tool. Now I don't care to use composition AI. Uh, most often for me, that doesn't crop it the way I want to do it. Um, those of you not familiar with composition AI, it's using AI to crop your image. For this specific image, I just have in camera the eagle too far to the right and too like high in the frame. So what I want to do is I want to grab the lower left-hand handle and just pull it up. Just like this. And you'll notice I'm keeping the original ratio. I prefer usually to keep the original ratio as opposed to doing like a free-form crop. Or every now and then maybe I'll do a 4x5 if I know I'm going to be printing to 8x10 because that's the perfect ratio for an 8x10. But in this case, I'm going to keep the original ratio. I'm going to grab from this lower left-hand handle and pull up. And what I want to make sure is all the white feathers are there. I don't want to, say, crop away any of the white feathers. So I'm just going to bring it down uh, just so I got all the white feathers in here. And now uh, the bird is more towards the middle of the frame, but there is some empty space to the left. So that's what I want, and I'm going to click Apply. And there we go. Now, the next thing I'll do, if needed, is change the profile. Now, if I open up the Develop Raw, I could go right here and change the profile, but the Luminar default profile is fine. And the next thing I'll do, if needed, is adjust white balance. And white balance is fine, so I don't need to worry about that. And then the next thing I do, which is almost always needed, is adjust tone. And in uh, Luminar Neo, they call it light. So that's highlight shadows, and then down here in blacks and whites as well. So here, right away, I'm just going to go to shadows and open those up, make it a bit brighter. Bring the highlights in. What I do is I look at the brightest part of an image, like right in here, and I'll just pull the highlights down. And all of a sudden, you'll kind of see some uh, texture or some clarity kind of snap in. So you'll see some detail all of a sudden. And that, just eyeballing it, for me, is a good highlights adjustment. Then I'll get a blacks and white adjustment. What I'll do is I'll turn on the clipping indicators by tapping the J key. You'll know those on if you look at the histogram. You see these little like circles in the left and right? That means the clipping indicators are on. If I tap the J key again, the clipping indicators are off. 
So I'll turn those on and I'll go to the white slider, move it to the right. And if I go too far, you'll see because the clipping indicators are on, I'll have a red overlay. That means I'm blowing out the highlights in those areas. If you're blowing out the highlights, that means there's no detail there. If I print this, no ink is going to get put there down there at all. I personally do not like to blow out the highlights. So I'll just leave those clipping indicators on and I'll back this off until that red completely dissipates. Then I'll do the same thing for blacks, except I'll move the black slider to the left. And if I go too far, you'll notice blue shows up on the screen. That's indicating that I'm crushing the shadows. If you're crushing the shadows, there's not any detail there. And if you don't have any detail there, that means when you print it, just black ink's going to put down. Now, for wildlife images, I usually don't like to crush the shadows at all either. So I'll move that just so all that blue uh, dissipates. For landscape images, sometimes I do like to crush a little bit of the shadows. So that is a, difference, uh, a different way I will edit from a wildlife image to a landscape image. Now, just eyeballing it, it, it does look maybe the blacks are still a little too dark. So I'll move this to the right a little more. So that's that. So I, I've done light or tone. For me, tone encompasses light and uh, the black and whites down here. So we're all done with that. The next thing I'll do is color. So I'll jump down to color. And for this one, I think I'll just increase saturation a little bit. Uh, sometimes I'll do vibrance as well. If there's a person in the image, I probably wouldn't move saturation at all because saturation will increase or decrease the color of every single pixel equally. So if you have a person, let's say they're relatively pale, but they have like yellowish skin, orangish skin, you know, skin tone. If you move saturation to the right, you'll give them a sunburn. Whereas vibrance doesn't affect every pixel equally and not all colors equally. So that it doesn't affect oranges, yellows, and reds quite as much as the other colors. So it would be a better choice if I had a person in here that had paler skin. I'm just going to, for this bald eagle though, I'm just touching saturation up. And actually, I am almost done. What I want to do though, is I want to go to uh, structure. And with structure, I want to see what it does. Because sometimes I don't like what structure does. So I'll move like a mount up. And you can see what it's doing. Not sure I like it. I still have the clipping indicators on. You can see the blue coming in there. So just remember to turn those off. You just have to tap the J key again. But I don't care for what structure is doing. So I'm not going to do anything there. Uh, what I will do instead is go to details. And what I like to do with details as far as the top three sliders is work them from the bottom up. So I'll do large details. See what that does. Just tweak that up a little bit. My medium details. Tweak that up just a touch and small details. What I'm guarding is against is I want to make sure that I don't over sharpen the image. It usually just won't look right if you over sharpen the image. Uh, so I'm going to be very careful of that. I'll just add a tiny bit of sharp. Actually, it's pretty sharp now. It might be over sharpened actually after saying all that. So I'll just back those off. So that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I might want to do here is if I go to develop, and I go to masking, and I get a brush, and I want to mask the eyes. So I'm going to get a smaller brush by hitting the left bracket key to get a smaller brush. I think I bring softness down to around 50. What I often like to do with my wildlife images is just bring out the eyes a little bit. And the easiest way to do that is just to make them a little brighter. So I'll get this brush. It's like you go from this size brush to that size brush. There's like nothing in the middle. So what I'm going to do is just go around the color part or the iris part of the eye here. So we have the mask. And then with that mask, I'll go back to adjustments and I'll go to light. And I just want to brighten up the eye a little bit. And then we're going to go to color and we're going to add some saturation to the eye. Just to bring it out a little more. Now, what I like to do is finish off the image with a vignette. And yeah, I'm really done. So we'll go down to vignette. And I like to add a darker vignette. Uh, the reason why I like to add a darker vignette is when we look at images, we tend to look at two things first. Uh, the brighter part of the image first and the most in focus part of the image first. Meaning blurry parts of the image we don't tend to look at or 
brighter or darker parts we don't look at at least first if you add a darker vignette and it's around the edges what that encourages everyone to do is to look more towards the middle of the image and if they're looking more towards the middle of the image it's a more pleasurable viewing experience for them if there's something very bright there isn't in this case but if there was something very bright towards the edge it tends to make them look away and it's not as pleasurable of a viewing experience so i'm done i just added that slight dark vignette um to this image there's before of course it's not including the crop and there's after there's before and there's after i also could go and do a side-by-side -side view or a split view like this there's before and there's after so you can see that was done very, very quickly. It was very easy to do uh, in Luminar Neo. They have a very powerful processing engine. There isn't a lot you have to worry about. There's a lot of other stuff here, creative tools. There's like landscape tools. When we do a landscape image, I'll probably delve into some of those. If you're doing a portrait, and I'll, in this series of videos, I'll definitely do a portrait. and I'll show you some of the portrait tools. So uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. And remember to click that little bell so that you get notifications of when I post new videos. And if you are very interested in this series of Lunar Neo videos, definitely do that so that you know when I post a new Lunar Neo how-to video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.